Hi everybody, I think we're live. How are you doing tonight? It's Wednesday night at 8.30 and here we are again. And tonight what I'm doing is sharing my screen. We're gonna go through a few PowerPoint slides again because I've got some materials for you. I know this is a big hot topic and weight is a sensitive issue. I've had so many people come in and talk to me about how to lose weight, how can I lose weight? And I really want to stress with you that I've met a lot of people, a lot of you as well, who keep going for those quick fixes. And a quick fix might help you. It might help you to lose some weight and that makes you happy. But almost always you gain it back. And just because you did lose weight doesn't mean that you're healthy. So if you feel like you're overweight and you need to lose some weight, hi Christy, hi Annie, hi Tim, and hi Alex. Thanks everybody for joining me. I'm glad that you're here. I just saw everybody pop up. Um, remember, there's lots of different ways to force your body to lose weight and maybe you've tried them and you still can't lose weight. That's what we're gonna talk about tonight. I'm gonna tell you the reasons why you can't lose weight because when you try to force your body into something and it won't let you, you got to stop and think about that. A couple of things we're going to talk about, I'm going to encourage you to start to think a little bit differently so that when you do, things are going to make sense and you're going to approach it differently. You're going to lose some weight and you're going to get healthier in the process. Okay. I don't like it when people go to a nutrition store or go to Medi Weight Loss or go see their doctor who puts them on a drug to make them lose weight. Think about, I can't even remember when this was in the 1990s, Fen Fen. If you, if anybody remembers that, Fen Fen was killing people. But guess what? They lost weight. It was horrible for you. It was such a stress on your body, yet droves of people were going to do it so they could lose weight. Use that as an example in your brain to say, that's not okay to do. That's not the right way to do it. What we need to discover is why, 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 why. And take a look at my screen. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Tamara. Uh, hi, Christy. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate you being here. Look at this picture of this chunky monkey. And anything about this picture, hi, Josh. Just you, the first thought that should go through your head is, Oh my God, what is that monkey eating to get like that? He can't be eating his normal diet or he wouldn't look like that. He's getting fed the sad American diet that we're going to talk about. He's eating in excess. He's gotten lazy. And isn't that horrible? I mean, look at that poor monkey. I feel bad for him. But think about how many Americans this same exact thing is happening to. So if you're listening, hi, Diane, hi, Christy, here tonight, and you need to lose some weight, I want you to take some responsibility. No more complaining, okay? There is no blame here. I was appalled one day when a person who I've been working with told me that the doctor, her primary care physician who she was working with, Literally, and this made her go into tears just telling me about it, just told her she's fat and lazy. She'll never lose weight. You're just fat and lazy. He's told her so many times to lose weight. And she must just be fat and lazy. It's not her thyroid. It's not this. It's not that. She was so offended by that. Yes, she was overweight and she needed to lose weight. She was overweight significantly, but she wants to. Just nobody gave her the tools to know how to, and nobody helped to get her healthier so that she actually could. Okay, so there is no blame here. I don't care how overweight you are, where you're at, but I want you to stop complaining about it because if you're here to listen, then listen. Don't listen to respond. Don't listen to make an excuse. Listen to learn so you can change some things because then I guarantee your body's going to start to change. Hi, Karen. Hi, Amanda. Hey, Emily. Always nice to have you on board. Okay, so let's get off that monkey screen. And this is what we're going to talk about tonight. The reasons that you've gained weight or that you can't lose weight are right here on the screen. It's because you follow a sad diet. And an American diet, the American weight is very, very sad. Standard American diet is what SAD stands for. 
Maybe it's because you don't exercise. Maybe it's a combination of all six of these things, and there can be more things as well. So this isn't the whole kit and caboodle, but these are the top things that are barriers. So if you are not willing to change what you're putting in to your body, you're not going to lose weight. You go do a fad diet, go jump on the, the latest craze, go lose 10 or 15 pounds, you're going to gain it right back. You have to change how you're eating. Wrap your brain around that. It's hard. I'll be the first to admit it. It's hard at first, but it gets easier and it becomes a lifestyle. You got to change your lifestyle. And then if you have a little cheat here and there or some, you know, ooh, I splurged, I had this or that, no big deal. But you have to be willing to change your lifestyle, okay? So maybe it's the sad diet. Maybe it's because you don't exercise. Maybe you're just stressed out to the max. Okay, from home, from school, from work, from relationships, from your parents, from your children. I don't know who is stressing you out, but if you're stressed out, we did a video on this a couple of weeks ago just about stress. Go back and look for that video and start watching it. We'll talk about it a little bit tonight, but I did a whole 30 minutes just on stress. Maybe you do have a thyroid problem. Let's make sure we talk about that. And if you're a woman, and you're between the ages of 35 and 55, it's probably related to your hormones because they're changing. And those changes put different demands on your body and you're stressed out and you're eating like crap and you're not getting your sleep. No wonder your body's just packing on the pounds and doesn't want to let go. Each one of these things we're going to talk about. And then lastly, we're going to talk about adrenal fatigue. Now that's tied really closely with the stress aspect. But I'm going to talk about one where you're stressed and your hormones are really high. And adrenal fatigue is when you are wiped out, honey. Just completely wiped out. Hello, Megan. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. And I need you to start eating good food. Just simplify it. Make it as easy as possible. Carbs, how much fat, how much this, micronutrients, macronutrients. You know, there are a lot of great recommendations out there, I'm not knocking them at all, but all I want you to do now, right now, is to look at your food differently. Start to eat real food, whole food. An apple is a whole food. A banana is a whole food. Your carrots, your celery, your beets, something that is grown is going to be way better for you than something out of a box. Okay, are you still going through the fast food drive-in? I can't tell you how many times I've talked with people, and it's just like taxi cab confessions. First thing out of their mouth, I was going past the drive through and my, I, my car just turned, and I went in, and I bought, you know, whatever through the drive through So a big, you know, soda, big fries, and a big burger, and it was fat, and I felt like crap after I ate it, and you want to know what I say? Good. I'm glad you did it because you got it out of your system and you felt horrible. When you start cleaning up your diet and you start eating well, you actually start to give your body nutrients because part of this whole problem of gaining weight is because your body is starving for nutrients. You're feeding it the sad diet. You're putting crap in. When the burgers from the fast food joints can sit on a shelf and not get moldy, and not get eaten up by bugs, that should be a clue that maybe it's not really food. How much preservative, how much pesticide, how much GMO, how much whatever other toxins are in it, that it doesn't even mold is a problem. Real food will get moldy, right? It'll start to destroy. Think about that. I want you eating real food. So the Whole30, I hear a lot of people talking about Every time somebody tells me they're going to do it, I say, great, that's fantastic. You know, um, you're going to start to feel better as soon as you start to put real food into your body. They're guaranteed. Then there's some specific foods, actually, hi, Penny, that make you inflamed, okay, that just naturally make you irritable, make you irritated, make your body hold on to water, and they're going to make you gain weight. So... On that note, if you are a person who gets on the scale every day or twice a day, stop it. You have to stop. 
It's not helping you. You can weigh yourself in the morning and weigh yourself at night. It is going to be different. So stop doing that. All you're doing is playing a mind game and getting really mad and disappointed and then going and eat because you're so disappointed in yourself because you gained weight and you barely ate anything all day. Your body's just preserving. It's holding on to stuff. Starve yourself all day. Weigh yourself in the morning. Starve yourself all day. Weigh yourself at night and you'll probably gain two pounds. What the? Every time you drink a glass of water, you gain a pound until you pee it back out. Okay, so don't play that game with yourself. It is so hard, I know, because there are so many of you addicted to that scale, but you got to stop. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Put it away. You know, check it periodically if you need to. But go on how you feel and go on how your clothes are fitting. It's a much better way. So foods like gluten, a lot of those carbs, your wheat, barley, and rye are going to make you inflamed. Dairy is going to make you inflamed. Corn is going to make you inflamed, and so is soy. So just in general, and we're not even talking at all about foods that you're allergic to. If you're allergic to a food, it will make you inflamed, even though it's not, even if it is a good food. But those four foods that I just said are cause inflammation in general for everyone. So think about that. The more dairy that you eat, eat or drink because you love cheese or you love your yogurt or you love having a glass of milk, you're never going to lose weight if you keep doing that, okay? All of the yo-yo dieting that you've been doing for the last 20 years, you've trained your body to be prepared. Just like a Boy Scout, be prepared. Your body is prepared because every other week, every other month, every other year, whatever it might be, when you decide you're going on a diet because you need to lose weight, you put your body into starvation mode and your body doesn't like that. So... When you do that and you go down to a 500 calorie diet, your body says, whoa, I don't know if we can handle this. We can't survive on 500 calories. Is it going to force you to lose weight? Yep, for most people. But your body will stop that process. Even by eating 500 calories a day, you're going to plateau because your body shuts everything down. And when it shuts everything down, you stop burning calories. Now you've trained it. Oh, every, every so often, oh, periodically, we cut the calories and your body is always prepared. So when you are putting in a lot of calories, what does it do? It saves it. It holds on to it for a rainy day. Just in case you're going to get caught in that starvation again, you've got plenty of fat to survive. Your body is always prepared. It's not making a mistake. It didn't make you fat. Just because it made you fat, gain weight, gain fat cells for a reason. To be prepared because you trained your body to say, every time I turn around, I might starve you. So, wow, did you know that? You did it to yourself by going back and forth on that yo-yo dieting. But you can change it. You've got to start giving your body what it really needs and it will plateau and then you'll be able to start to lose weight. I hope that's making sense. Hi, Lisa. Um, let's see, what else do I have on here? Mm. So we talked about some inflammatory foods. Now think about how bloated you feel and how constipated you are. And if those things are going on, that's a problem. Your belly is not working like it's supposed to. So even when you start to put good foods in, because maybe you're already eating good, but you're still not losing weight. Well, if your belly is really inflamed, if your stomach and your intestines are infected, if they're inflamed, they're not digesting the food. So what's the whole purpose of the GI tract? to absorb the nutrients so the body can put them back together, give it to the cells so you have energy. And I bet you the more overweight you are, the less energy you typically have. That seems to go hand in hand too. So you might be, I mean, you might have changed your foods already and if you did, good job. But your belly doesn't know what to do with it because it's been so used to eating crap that it's not performing like it's supposed to. So sometimes we've got to work on the gut just to digest better, digestive enzymes, getting up the acid. Yes, you heard me right, increasing the acid because when you're sick and overweight, even if you have heartburn symptoms, 
you probably have a low level of acid. And we need it. The acid in your stomach helps you start to break down your foods. It gets rid of parasites and bacteria. So if you're taking Tums or Rolaids or Unpepsid or Zantac or Miprazol, anything that lowers your acid, you probably have an infection in your gut. And then you're not digesting your food. Huh. So you're never going to get healthy. You're never going to lose weight if you can't digest your food and actually get the nutrients. That's a problem. Now, earlier this afternoon, I posted a video. I hope some of you watched it. I'm going to encourage all of you. I put the link on this slide so you can go back as well. But Gary Taubes is actually a journalist who's done a great job, an investigative journalist, and really brought the light to this thing about calories in, calories out, and good calories and bad calories. So he's written a book called Good Calories, Bad Calories. Then he wrote about why we get fat. And he also has one about um, sugar, but I'm forgetting the title of that. So search his name. The videos are really good or buy the book. This is a snapshot of what he's talking about. And one reason I listened to a video of his about five years ago, and it really struck me because it was about... In, um, he talked about a research study that proved calories in can never equal calories out. So you got to wrap your brain around that one because we all believe, oh, well, if I only eat this many calories and well, my trainer told me to eat this many calories and I'm burning this many calories, even when people do calories into calories out within 100 calories every single day, they still gain 21 pounds in 10 years. And that's doing it exactly calories in, calories out. In over a 10 year period, a decade, they still gain 21 pounds. Isn't that crazy? So there's a great research study that proves that. And I wanted to share that with you because that changes your whole thought process about how to lose weight. We've got to stop thinking about that way with calories. I don't want you eating calories. If you're eating the right food, it doesn't matter how much you eat. Wow, isn't that cool? You can eat as much as you want when you're eating the good food, when you're eating real food. It won't matter. So some other things that he talks about a little bit. Hi, Holly, and hi, Carol, is, um, of course, why we get fat. And the other main thing going on is insulin production. And now some of you may be familiar with insulin because it's very much associated with diabetes. Now, people who are insulin dependent may be diabetes, um, juvenile diabetics or type 1 diabetes, or they may also be type 2 diabetes. The difference is type 1, their body can't produce insulin. They were born that way. Okay, the problem with type 2 is that you earned it because you ate bad for so long. Type 2 diabetes is earned. It wasn't given to you by your genetics. It was given to you by your bad habits. The good news about that is it's completely reversible. 100% reversible if you change the way you eat and the other things that we're going to talk about tonight. Who wants to get diabetes? Diabetes puts you at risk for every single disease on the planet, from heart having a heart attack to having a stroke to getting cancer to losing a foot or a leg. Don't go there. Sugar is the problem. So, oh, I flipped slides. Sorry about that. So fructose is one thing that causes insulin resistance. The more sugars that you eat, the more insulin that you make, okay? Insulin helps you to get sugar into the cell to produce energy. But there's some ways that we get very resistant to the insulin being able to open up that door into the cell. So who's heard of high fructose corn syrup? Hi, Jackie. Hi, Jean. High fructose corn syrup, anybody? Okay, if you look at any product in your pantry, I guarantee if you haven't purposely taken it out of your pantry, it's in a gazillion things in your pantry. Did you know it's in ketchup? Yeah. Did you know it's in all of the, um, you know, fruit drinks? Do you know it's added to everything? And it causes diabetes because it causes insulin resistance. 
So most diabetic people, are they skinny or are they overweight? Only if they were born with an insulin deficiency would they be the thin ones, okay? So they're always overweight when they can't um, either use their insulin properly. So high fructose corn syrup is a problem. Chronically elevated insulin levels because you're eating sugar, 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 sugar in all different forms, whether it's a good sugar or a bad sugar or processed sugar, you are keeping those insulin levels really, really high. And that's a problem because insulin helps to regulate your fat metabolism. So it is regulating, should we hold on to that fat cell or do we want to get rid of that fat cell? When you get rid of fat cells, you get skinny. High insulin, high fat cells, okay? So I'm, I'm trying to put the, the pieces together here for you to help reinforce the foods that you're eating. We make more insulin based on the sugars and carbohydrates that we eat. So I've listed breads, cereals, rice, pasta, insulin, 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 fat cells, fat cells, fat cells, okay? This isn't about calories. It's not about calories at all. All right, and then sugar, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup, fructose, all of those refined sugars are definitely the problem. All right, but there's a hormone that burns fat as well, and insulin and leptin actually do a lot of things together and work in the whole normal cascade for it's okay to increase insulin to get glucose into the cell and to use it for energy. I'm talking about the abuse, the excessive amounts, the high amounts, and then we don't use it well. So what is leptin? Leptin helps you to feel satisfied. So how many of you out there say you eat and then, you know, 30 minutes and I'm hungry and I'm still hungry and I'm hungry and I'm eating and I'm eating crap because I'm hungry and I feel bad because I'm eating crappy and I feel bad because I'm overweight and I want to lose weight and here we are stuck in putting in all of this more and more and more food because we're hungry all the time. Well, leptin's playing a role there. It's supposed to be balancing our energy levels and our hunger. But just like high levels of insulin become resistant, high levels of leptin become resistant too. And so the high insulin doesn't let your body see that you've got a lot of leptin. And now your body, your brain doesn't know that you're full. It keeps sending the same message. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. So if you want to change that, what do you need to do? You need to start eating real food. Single ingredient food. The food that's on the perimeter of the grocery store, the real food, the vegetables, the fruits, the, the meats, anything that's a single ingredient is going to be better than something that has 20 different ingredients and you don't even know what most of them are, even when it's, well, we added this vitamin and that vitamin and that vitamin and that vitamin. Why do they have to add vitamins? Because they strip it all out in the processing. So you have to have a good balanced level of leptin to actually be able to use it. And when you use it, you're going to lose weight. Okay, so your yo-yo dieting, that triggers your brain to say, whoa, starvation, put, go in pres preservation mode. That triggers leptin. Those 500 calorie diets triggers that starvation mode. So you are wiped out of your leptin in those cases. So not having an enough leptin too low and leptin too high, now you're so resistant, neither one of those are good. Fried foods, your wheat and gluten products, your corn and soy, wait a minute. Didn't I talk about those on the first slide where I talked about inflammatory foods that will make you gain weight? Well, those same foods, and now I added fried foods, cause leptin resistance. Your body doesn't see it. It doesn't know it should be trying to lose weight. So again, to be more sensitive to it, get your body to use the leptin. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Betty. To use the leptin, single foods, whole foods, real foods, people. High levels of insulin cause leptin resistance, so your body makes more fat. You crave unhealthy foods, 
you don't feel satisfied, and you have less energy. I'm going to say that again because that summarizes everything here. High levels of insulin from all of the carbs and all of the sugar cause leptin resistance. Your body is blinded to it. Leptin helps you burn fat. When you're leptin resistant, your body makes more fat. Hold on to the fat. Hold on to the fat. Now you're craving unhealthy food. You don't feel satisfied and you have less energy. Vicious, vicious circle. It's awful. I know you're in a bind. I understand. I'm trying to help give you tips to break it. Okay, we got to break it. Hello, Pam. Hello, Jackie. Okay, you've got to exercise. You really do. You have to move. Now, maybe you're a person who already is very athletic. Maybe you exercise a ton. Well, great, unless you're exercising too much. Because too much exercise actually is bad for you too. Okay, so you got to find the right amount. But if you're a couch potato, if you're not doing anything, you need to move more. You don't have to join the gym. I'm going to tell you a few exercises just to do at home. Super simple, super easy, takes five minutes, but you've got to start moving. You've got to, at the very least, start walking, okay? Start doing something. So you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to join a gym. You don't have to do it in excessive amounts. Two hours a day is ridiculous, okay? Who's got time for that? Just a couple of times a week to get in some more movement. And then every night before you go to bed, or if your routine is better to do it in the morning, sometime during the day, take five minutes. Just five minutes, and I want you to do a couple of exercises. Okay, these are strengthening exercises because when you build a muscle, you're gonna burn fat. Okay, you can get more lean and more tone and that scale may never change the number, but you sure are gonna feel really good about yourself and your clothes are gonna fit better. You may go down a couple of pant sizes even when the number on the scale doesn't change. It's just a number, okay? So every morning or every night or maybe both, couple of simple, simple exercises. So on the screen, I put a picture, just in case some of you aren't familiar, I want you to do a plank. So the way that woman is down on her elbows and palms and on the toes of her feet, and she's holding her body like a plank. I want you to do that. Now, if you can only do that for a couple of seconds, fantastic, you're done, okay? But count, count how many seconds you can do it. Because tomorrow, when you do it again, I want you to do it for a second or two longer. And I want you to keep building. So if you do it for five seconds, the next day try to do it for 10. And then try to do it for 15. Keep building and building. The first time you do it, if you can't hardly do it, it's okay. You tried. You're going to try again. And you're going to be able to do it. But you have to try. Okay? I want you to do some push-ups. Now, it can be girl push-ups on your knees, you know, and just pushing down to the ground. If you can do one, fantastic. If you can only lower yourself to the body, fantastic. You still had to do muscle resistance, and the next time you do it, the next day, you're going to try to do one more. Guys, this is so, so easy and so powerful. I am not asking you to spend hours doing tons of push-ups that you can't do. I'm asking you to try to do one. Now, if you can do five or 10 to start with, do it. And then the next day, do a few more. The goal here isn't to do as many as possible. The goal is to do a couple of different exercises, uh, 10 or 15 in a rep, do a couple reps and you're done. Take five minutes. I guarantee it will make a humongous difference in your body, in your toning and how your body increases its temperature, increases metabolism, and starts to burn some fat. So a few sit-ups, same thing, just start with one if you can't do them. Start with one, and then I want you to try to do two, okay? Just build on it, build on it. Also, do some leg lifts, okay? So standing up and then kicking a leg out to the side, kicking your leg out to the back, and then um, even going on hands and knees and kicking your leg up, 
Okay, super simple exercises, but where do most of us complain? Around the middle and around our butts as women that we wanna to tone those areas, so those leg lifts, super important. That's all you have to do, literally five minutes. Five minutes is what I take at night when I remember to do them. I try to do them routinely, but I, I forget sometimes. But when I do them consistently, boy, can I tell. And those are the only things that I do, those exercises, and it really helps to keep me toned but then some walking, maybe getting up to jogging, you have to do something, okay? So promise me, you're gonna do something. Gracie, are you gonna do something? Marilyn, if you're not doing anything, do something, okay? Guys, you gotta do something. Um, Annie, I'm gonna go back to your question that I see, is leptin resistance also called metabolic X syndrome? Metabolic X, there's two different metabolic Xs. It's actually more high Julie of um, quantifying a couple of different symptoms of being overweight, high cholesterol, hypertension that puts you at risk. I think there's actually five of them for um, um, becoming diabetic or having heart disease or a stroke. But when you just think about your body not doing things correctly metabolically, then yes, Annie, leptin would be one of the key things within that. When they originally came up with syndrome X or metabolic um, syndrome X, that was not included because it really wasn't known about, but it definitely is a piece of the puzzle. The other key thing when I talk about exercise is that if you hate running, don't start running. Do something that you can love, something that you can enjoy, because if you hate it, it's gonna stress you out. And if it stresses you out, it's a problem, okay? All right, I can't believe we've been on for 30 minutes already. Wow, I'm sorry. I try to keep this short, and this is not short. Needed this, Becky, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna get through a couple of more things without keeping you all night long, but stress, stress, stress. Again, I did a video just a couple of weeks ago about stress. In this slide, I want you to look at the red line. This is cortisol. Cortisol is a steroid. Steroids make you gain weight. If you are stressed, out all the time. If you're not sleeping, your body is stressed. Okay, if you're eating crap, your body is stressed. But look at this red line that I'm gonna outline. It's right here, red, red, oh darn. I clicked, sorry. This red line right here is way too high. This person is very, very, very stressed. Look at the dials here. They have an excessive amount of steroids surging through their bodies. They will never lose weight. Eat nothing all day. Eat just an apple all day. You're not gonna lose weight because your body won't let you because you're full of steroid. We have to change your stress before we can impact your weight. Okay, your thyroid. Always gotta talk about the thyroid. Sometimes you think it's your thyroid and sometimes it is. Everything that we're talking about tonight, it's usually a combination. It's a couple of different things. It's never one thing. Whenever you're sick, whenever you're not as healthy as you want to be, it's never just one thing. It's a combination of things. So make sure that you get your thyroid tested. Do not allow your doctor to only check a TSH. TSH is a brain hormone that tells your thyroid to make more or make less. What we need to know is do you have enough actual hormone, T3 and T4, and um, what is your temperature? Remember when I've talked about that, that tells me about your metabolism. We've got to get your temperature up. We want to know if you have enough of the hormones, and we want to know if your body can use it. And there's a couple of different ways to look for that too. But the main thing I want to stress about your thyroid is to get it optimal. Because I see so many people where their lab values are normal, but they're not optimal. They're not ideal. So if you're taking a medication and you're on the bottom of normal, that's not optimal. Especially if you're still overweight, you're still cold, and um, you don't have any energy, you need to push it up higher. Your hormones, ladies. Your hormones, your hormones always play a role. Um, yeah, prolactin, high prolactin, weight gain city. Hmm, yeah. So all different kinds of hormones. Get them tested, okay? Your primary doctor, your OB, they have not been taught. They do not believe in checking your hormones. 
The one thing I'll say about that is if your doctor is going to give you a medication that alters your hormone levels, you better know what your hormone levels are before you alter them. Because how do you know how they need to be altered? Okay. Sometimes when your hormones are out of balance, you're going to gain weight. When your hormones are way too high, you're going to gain weight. When you've depleted all of your hormones, you're going to gain weight. And so sometimes as women, when we get our estrogen might be low or normal, but we have testosterone up here, you're going to gain weight because you got too much testosterone, even though the other ones are okay. So that's a problem. Maybe you're not breaking down the hormones or clearing them out or detoxing, metabolizing them. That's going to make you gain weight. Okay, so get them tested. They can be tested through the blood, through the urine, through the saliva, all different ways. Here's an example of just a superfood that's super good for you, maca, maca powder. Add it to a smoothie, add it to a shake. Well, oh, excuse me. Add it into, um, I like to put it in, um, it's, it's kind of got a nutmeg, pumpkin-y type of um, smell or flavor to it. So I like to add it into things that are of that flavor. So if I make a pumpkin pie, I add it into the pumpkin pie because it goes really well. But it increases energy. It gives you better stamina. It helps you chill out with your stress. It may help your libido. helps to balance your hormones. It improves infertility. It reduces depression. And then because it balances hormones, it helps with PMS and menopause and PICOs. It can also help with your memory. Um, so just some quick examples of boosting your body with a whole food, because maca is a plant, nothing else is added in there, but it's giving you superior nutrition. So if your gut is working and can absorb it, ooh, that's so nice. And then this is the last slide already, okay? We've talked about all six of those things. I know I've highlighted over them, but that's also because I've had a lot of individual um, videos that talk about them more specifically, and we can always go into this more in depth in the future as well. But I hope you're taking away some tips and some realizations to say, oh, like starving your body, limiting your calories, or knowing that you've been up, down, up, down, up, down with diets in the past, you have to first fuel your body consistently and then work on cleaning it up and cutting it down and getting out the carbs and you're going to lose weight. Adrenal fatigue is different than just the stressed out where I showed you the cortisol is so high. When your cortisol is so high, it doesn't let you sleep. It doesn't let you rest. It gives you stamina and energy, but you can feel uh, wired and tired. On this example, it's exactly the opposite. So... These two black lines, you want to be right in the middle for your cortisone and your cortisol. The red line is this particular woman. She had a lot of fat around her middle. She had no energy whatsoever, and she couldn't lose weight. This is her. She is almost equal with the very bottom line of the graph on both cortisone and cortisol. Her body is so pooped out, she's got nothing left. She's got no reserve. This impacts your thyroid. If you've got adrenal fatigue like this and you just jump on a thyroid medication, you're gonna go into a crisis because it's too stressful on your body. Your adrenal gland can't handle the medication. You have to support your adrenal gland. When you are so pooped out, so wiped out, your adrenal gland needs a break. It needs to be supported. It needs to learn how to make cortisol again. This is a case of whipping the horse and whipping the horse and whipping the horse until the horse is dead and you're whipping the horse. It's not going to get up. That's where this woman was. That's where some of you might be. You've got to chill out. You've got to put weight loss on the back burner because you have to heal your body before you can start to lose the weight. If you just force yourself to take a medication that makes you lose weight, you could end up in the hospital. Okay, so that's pretty serious. Um, but I've got two little tips that help dramatically with adrenal fatigue, and I think you're going to like them. There are many more things to do and that need to be done, so don't think this is the complete answer, okay? But who knows what this is a picture of? And I know that there is a delay, but who loves this? 
And this is a picture that I took when my husband and I and my Aunt Angie and her husband Gary were in the Dominican Republic. So this is grown there. Who can give me um, an answer to know what that is? So Julie, you gave me a thumbs up, but what is it? What is it, guys? There's a big pod there. It's powdered. It's also in these beans. What could that be? Something that the majority of you, hey Bev, like to eat. I like to eat. Tim, who is listening, likes to eat it excessively. Okay. What is it? And it's so good for you. It gives you so many nutrients. Nope, it's not turmeric. Thanks for, for guessing. Jean, turmeric is very, very orangey. Um, and it's a root like um, ginger. They look very, very close, but it's very orange. Um, cacao, Chris says. Annie is raising her hand, and Kim and Tim gave me thumbs up. Cacao, which is chocolate. This is what actual chocolate looks like. This is chocolate. Yay, Holly! Chocolate powder or cacao. That's what it's really called. Um, I don't know when or who decided Americans would call it cocoa, but it's actually cacao. Cacao is chocolate. These, um, this pod right here is how it grow it's grown and it hangs from trees. And then they get these beans um, like a coffee bean, but much bigger, like about that size. I actually have some coffee beans or um, some cacao beans up in my cupboard. But then they grind them down. And so without the processing, that's real cacao. When you buy cacao powder, that's what it should be. The ingredient should only be cacao, nothing else added into it. Okay, but you can, you know, somebody asked um, after the coffee video or the pumpkin latte video about a good hot chocolate. Well, take your milk or alternative and put cacao in it and make it hot. That's the best hot chocolate ever for you and super healthy for you. Oh, Annie, it's on her inflammatory list or she must be allergic to it. Annie, if you avoid it for long enough, it's going to come off your list. You won't keep that allergy, Okay. So, but when you get, um, when you're so inflamed and you develop an allergy to it, you have to avoid it till you get that allergy gone and uh, then you'll be able to have it again. So super, super good for you. It helps to raise your happy hormone, your serotonin, your oxytocin, gives you magnesium. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, it's wonderful for you and it makes you happy and it makes you feel better and it is great to have. But did you notice there's no brand? I didn't give you a brand of a chocolate to start to eat. Why? Because heat destroys all of the nutrients in your chocolate. So when you go get a candy bar, when you go get a kiss, or whatever other form that chocolate is in, in that milk chocolate, it's only going to make you fat. Okay? Those processed um, chocolates are going to make you fat, and they are not giving you any health benefits. Real cacao is great for you. Eat it if you're not allergic to it, okay? And the thing to go along with it, who loves salty and sweet, right? Salt, 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 salt. Salt is the number one ingredient that you need more of. Yes, I said more of if you have adrenal fatigue. And many women get to the point of adrenal fatigue because they're so stressed for so long and have abused their bodies for so long. But real salt, Celtic salt, Himalayan sea salt, the ones that have color give you tons of minerals and it will help your adrenal gland to heal. So if you know you have adrenal fatigue and your adrenal gland is really pooped out and your cortisol values are very, very low, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in a glass of water every single day, okay? And you can even do more. Your body probably needs a little bit more, but start out small, okay? Christy says she loves salt, but I am going to stress again, it has to be good salt. Actual mineral salts, the Celtic salt, the Himalayan sea salt, not processed white bleached chemicalized formaldehyde, completely stripped Table salt. Don't do table salt. That is horrible for you. So I hope I made that clear. Real cacao, real salt, fantastic, and it's going to heal your adrenal glands. But if you eat the bad stuff, you're going to stay fat, 
You're going to have tons of swelling with your table salt. Your ankles are going to puff up and you're never going to lose weight. All right, guys, I've kept you 15 minutes over nine. I'm sorry I talked so long. My time went really fast. If you have any questions or other comments, I'll address them now. I hope you learned something. I hope it was helpful. I know a couple of you said it was helpful. Um, so let me know. Now's your time. Annie says, I drank, uh, drank one teaspoon of pink salt and water. Dropped my anxiety in two days. Fantastic, Annie. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for joining, Jean. Glad you loved it. Anybody else? Any questions? Oop, here everybody comes. Got some hearts, got some likes. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining me. Remember, share the videos if you like them. Stay tuned. I'm going to try to come up with something creative next week because I think I'm going to be in an area where I'm not going to have Wi-Fi, but I'll post something about that. You're welcome, Kim, and thanks for joining Randy. So share the videos. I love it when you get the message out. Help somebody else. Take away some tips. Watch some of those videos by Gary Taubes. It'll really help you change your mindset about how to lose weight. So good night, sleep well, and thanks so much again for joining me. I hope you learned something.